So per client requests, I am going to do a quick tutorial on palm pad injuries. The type that I'm gonna talk about are the types that are like a blister. It looks similar to a blister that might be caused by hiking um, in boots. And it's, you know, a blister with a flap of skin that comes up. And so I'm talking about when a dog like today that was doing uh, running, mushing on surfaces that were uh, a abrasive and caused a flap of skin to kind of come up um, from, the, from the bottom of the pad. Um, so before I start, I'm not a veterinarian. Um, I'm going to share with you just a very straightforward, basic um, way to take care of these injuries. But if you see any signs of infection, including, you know, puffiness, uh, it's warm, you see pus, uh, there's any kind of deep cut or wound um, that is going beyond the first couple layers of skin on the bottom of the pad, um, definitely call your vet, uh, make an appointment, get advice. Um, I am a first responder for humans. I've been backpacking for many years with dogs, have dealt with a number of different injuries, um, and have been doing this for seven years. Um, but I will share with, you know, just that knowledge. So now that that's out of the way, I'm talking about the layer of skin that of course is gonna be thicker than when we think of the three layers of skin that we have as humans. I'm talking about like a super calloused foot, let's say here, and this comes off. So I'm not talking about something that's like bleeding profusely or anything like that. There are still protective layers of skin, but it makes the pad tender. Um, you want to definitely make sure that your dog's foot is protected uh, from other surfaces once this wound is created. Um, so make sure that they have either a wrap or a you know, booty of some sort to wear as they're healing. Um, I just wanna say, you know, up front, it's gonna be painful for them um, or at least tender. So of course your care is dependent on their uh, sensitivities as well as their tendency to bite at or um, otherwise disrupt the healing process. So here's where we're gonna start. So if the dog gets wounded in complete wilderness, what I would recommend is consider, you know, the likelihood that it's going to be dirtied um, and uh, filled with debris um, from that point forward when you're cleaning it. You may choose to clean it at that time, um, but if it's likely that they're going to have the pat the wrap uh, pulled off or that they're gonna bite it off um, or that it's going to get filled with mud and other debris then there's no point in really you know cleaning it all out and putting something on it right away um, you may choose to because you want to get the uh, antimicrobial antibacterial uh, um, uh, um, process going or you want to do an initial cleaning I mean it's it wouldn't hurt, but it's kind of pointless. You know, if you're gonna be back at your car in an hour, you might just wanna wait, um, you know, if they're stomping through muddy streams and stuff like that. So, but if you're on a long backpacking trip or hiking trip and it's early on in the day, you might wanna do it um, to protect it um, and certainly for your dog's comfort. So it's all dependent, you know, when you choose to do the cleaning um, and do the wrapping, it's all dependent on the individual circumstances, of course, the longer you wait to clean it, the more likely there is going to be a, an infection problem. So what I recommend using most is HibaCleanse. HibaCleanse is the best um, ointment for sudsing up and cleaning uh, a wound. And you know, it's an antiseptic, antimicrobial, antibiotic, antibacterial, et cetera, et cetera. Um, cleanser that is used in medical settings and environments. Um, the main 
uh, ingredient, how do you even say this? Chlorhexidine gluconate, glu whatever, here it is. Um, that is, where is it? That is the main ingredient that studies have proven and shown um, does the best job of cleaning. That being said, it's not recommended that it be used in open wounds. So that's why I am recommending it. I do recommend, I use it for like everything, all kinds of cleaning out of everything. And it, it, it's always been a godsend for me and prevented infections. Um, so, you know, it's my go-to, but it's, uh, it's not supposed to be used for open wounds. So that's why I am talking about it for this flap of skin thing, for sure, I would use it. After that, I would use something like, um, oh, where is that spray? Bactine spray uh, or something that has lidocaine or something that has a um, pain relieving property uh, that maybe doesn't taste so good that the dogs don't wanna lick. Um, it doesn't sting. Um, something like this is really easy to use in the wilderness. Um, you can easily just give this, give a, a spray. It's not gonna hurt anything. Um, even if you're out there. But once you get home, soap and water. Soap and water is the go-to number one, no matter what. Basic soap, we're talking about um, a, uh, like Dr. Bronner's, uh, a Castile soap, something that's just basic soap ingredients and nothing, no, you know, no, you don't wanna have lots of um, fragrances and additional ingredients uh, that would cause irritation. You definitely do not wanna use alcohol. You don't wanna use peroxide. Alcohol is gonna sting like crazy. Don't use that on anybody for anything, unless you're just cleaning the surface of something that is not open, <laughs> you know, fine. Um, or you're cleaning the tip of tweezers for some reason to remove, you know, from something to um, sanitize a, a, um, a surface that is not opened. Um, peroxide you don't want to use because even though it looks awesome, the way it like bubbles and it makes you think that cleaning is happening and cleaning is happening, it's debriding uh, the surface as well, like causing, it could cause like little particles of dirt to be pushed out, but it could also push stuff in and it's, um, it's uh, killing the good stuff and the bad stuff. So it's killing skin cells that if there's a cut, you want, you want the living cells to come back together and grow together. But if it kills that, uh, then they can't grow back together. Um, so that's an example. Um, it's just too harsh of a thing that just um, inadvertently, it just kills all of it, good stuff and bad stuff. So don't use that. Um, you could use a double antibiotic or a triple antibiotic. At one point, someone, or I read that a double antibiotic is better for dogs for some reason, but I don't, I don't know exactly why or if that's actually uh, correct. But, but you know, something to consider or maybe look into further. Um, I would recommend using something like that as a lubricant for healing uh, for a um, wound like we're discussing in this video. I wouldn't use it necessarily for an, a cut. Um, I, I've, I understand that that could hinder some of the process of like the skin growing together potentially, but it is a good protectant layer um, to keep water, you know, to keep it kind of waterproof. Um, so, you know, you can consider it for that purpose. In the meantime, the next thing to do, so you're white, you wash with soap and water, basic soap and water, you dry it. Then I would use, have a cleanse, let it sit for like 30 seconds on the skin, do its work, then rinse it with water. Then maybe follow it up with a Bactine spray, which also kills stuff and takes away some pain. Then I would use a sterile gauze pad on the, on the paw itself. What you wanna do is, uh, you know, put that at the base of the paw where the, where the issue is potentially use some neosporin, triple antibiotic, double antibiotic as simply a protectant uh, to keep water out, but also as kind of a lubricant so it doesn't hurt so bad, right? So imagine if you have a blister, uh, this is why they make blister pads that are 
um, or blister band-aids that are really jelly like they're gel and soft and squishy to give some kind of like padding because it hurts when you put pressure so I mean I would do that with my dog you know I would use something like this with some you know double antibiotic and then possibly an initial wrap would be something like this this is next care um, it's a waterproof foamy kind of wrap it's sort of similar to like um an athletic tape but it's uh it's soft and flexible i use this on blisters uh on my own feet it's amazing stuff and then let's talk about how to wrap using um coban which is adhesive to itself and athletic tape and so the way I would recommend doing this on your dog's foot is pretend this is your dog's foot. Yes, it's a toilet paper roll. I know, that's all, I've, that's all I have. So if this part is the ankle, what I'm trying to show here is that the foot is gonna be wider than the ankle. So when you're making a wrap, you would do all the things I said, and then you put the pad on at the bottom of the foot. Of course, take it out of the wrapper. I don't wanna waste a good one. And then, and do not use Coban in a way that's too tight. That is gonna hurt. That's gonna cut off blood supply. Hopefully we all know at this point what it feels like when somebody puts a wrap on us and it's too tight. It does way more harm than good. It can actually lead to severe pain. But basically what I do is I will unroll it first a little bit, right? And then wrap it so that I know I'm not doing it too tight. And I do the wrap. Make sure it's loose enough. I feel it underneath. Make sure there's good blood flow. Make sure, one good thing to test is you touch the, the, the foot, human or animal, and feel the, the CSMs, the circulation, sensation, the movement of that uh, foot. Uh, make sure, and the, you know, the temperature and make sure all that's good consistently, like 20 minutes after you do the wrap, an hour after. Make sure it still feels warm to touch, um, that you know, it, you're making sure that it's not too tight, basically. So at the bottom of the foot here, remember this is the smaller part, the ankle. At the bottom of the foot, I do it just tight enough, but not too tight. So again, pull it out like this, and then come back and do the wrap but then you press it down on itself. I'm not gonna do that, so I, I don't wanna ruin it. But you press it down on itself and it self sticks, so it'll tighten up a little bit. But when you get up to the ankle, that's where I would do it a little tighter because that's the whole thing. The ankle part being a little tighter is gonna keep it from falling off. And that's the key because dogs will start, will pull on it. I don't know, that doesn't look tighter. Um, they will pull on it, they will try to chew, all this stuff. So there we go, it's tighter now. Do it tighter at the ankle, not too tight. And then what I follow that up with to make sure that it really stays on is some athletic tape at the very top at the ankle because this is static. It is not flexible, it will not give. So it's important to make sure this, that it's at the appropriate tightness you don't need to go any tighter than just slightly smaller than this area, okay? And then it will stay on. A dog is not gonna bite that off. And then the last step here is spray it with bitter spray. And the bitter spray will make them not wanna chew at their feet. So I would do that as your treatment um, make sure to change that a couple, you know, twice a day or so, depending on the situation. Um, and let your dog heal up. It's going to take a while, just like our feet, you know, to regrow that skin. It's going to take a while. So they need to rest, keep it dry, keep it clean. If you see any signs of infection again, uh, call your vet. And that's about it. Just su super basic, super basic care, but these are the things that I recommend most. So good luck. I hope that helps. And let me know if I can help you further.